So today I'm going to give you just a quick breakdown of a video done with Mike Winger and Melissa Doherty. I think Mike Winger has done more research on Brian Simmons and the Passion Translation than anyone out there, and in this video, he exposes the actual lies Brian has said by going to the original sources. And I realize that this may come across a bit like gossip because I'm just making quick points, but that is not the case. I really want everyone to see the original video because it's important to have answers for anyone you may know that is using the Passion Translation. This is just a quick version of five things that we should all know are problematic. And I'll include a bit of his video for point number five because this exposes Brian for the lies he's actually told. Number one, he was visited by an angel named Passion, and that's why it's called the Passion Translation. We know that many false religions dealt with angel visitations such as Mormonism and Joseph Smith. Number two, he claims that God gave him new information that has never been released until now, but we know that the canon is closed and there's nothing new coming out. There's only 21 chapters in the book of John, yet he claims that God gave him John chapter 22 when he was caught up to the library in heaven. Number three, Mike goes through so much of the scripture Brian has added to his version, sometimes 50% more than all the other versions. He has literally changed God's word to support their version of Christianity and signs and wonders. Number four, he reveals sources about Brian saying things such as, all that Jesus is, you now are. Everything that's true about Jesus can be spoken about you because you are in him. Which is obviously not true. Jesus is eternal and Jesus is God. So does that mean that we are true? I really have no words. And number five, Brian Seitz says that he was a co-translator for the Kuna translation. But after Mike Winger talks to people in these organizations, the truth comes out and the lies are exposed. Listen to this. Let me talk a little bit, if we can, if, if you're okay with switching gears, and talk Absolutely. about Brian's training and credentials. Yes. Yeah. I did like some investigative reportive type of job here. <laughs> Nobody's writing on this stuff, right? Online, I couldn't find anybody who is really soberly confronting the passion. At least there's a couple people, right? Um, but, but not enough. And I didn't find the content I wanted. So I wanted to know, what is Brian's training? Well, on, on his website, on the Passion Translation website, mm -hmm. interviews on the Broad Street Publishing website, that's the one who's publishing the book. Um, it says that he was a co-translator for the Kuna translation of the New Testament. And he also claims there in multiple places that he has linguistic and a biblical languages background. Mm -hmm. So he's got a, so in other words, you know, the vibe you give. Now it doesn't say he has a degree in such and such. It doesn't, it doesn't say he doesn't. It just, but it implies, okay, he's done translating before and he has a background in biblical languages and linguistics. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Brian also has claimed in an interview and I have a video on one of my, uh, on my channel. There's a video where I play him saying this. He says, I had some linguistic training in our years of new tribes training. And I was like, new tribes, what's that? What's new tribes? So I look up online and new tribes is a mission that is devoted to reaching unreached peoples and getting the Bible translated into their own languages. Yeah. It's an outreach. It's a wonderful ministry. And they've changed names. They used to be called new tribes back in the eighties. They've changed their name now um, to Ethnos 360, but it's the same organization. So I called Ethnos 360 and I got a hold of two of the guys that work there. One is Don, Don Pedersen. Uh, Don Pedersen, or I forget if it's Peterson now, I'm trying to remember how he pronounced his name. Um, here's what Don said about Brian Simmons. Now Don's actually speaking from Ethnos 360. He's speaking from the people Brian says trained him. And he says, Brian is not a linguist of any sort. Huh? Wait, I'm like, wait a minute, you mean he doesn't even have credentials? Because you can have credentials and produce a bad translation, but if you yeah. don't even have credentials and you're claiming to, now I think you're deceitful. Let me give you more de details on this because there's a lot more. He said he had experience, right? Not just credentials of training, but experience that he has actually translated. Um, he said, and I'll quote, he says, we had, this is Brian's claims about himself, we had to decipher the language, develop an alphabet, we had to discern and decipher the grammar structure. That took us the first two years while we were there. I mean, obviously, when he says we, he must mean himself, right? And I've got, I've got the interview where he said this on my uh, YouTube channel. Um, so the implication is that Brian was integral and formative in, in this translation happening. 
okay, well, Jerry McDaniels, who worked with the Kuna people, the same people Brian says he translated the Bible for, he worked with them for over 30 years, Jerry McDaniels, and he works for Ethnos 360, right? At that time, New Tribes Mission. Mm -hmm. He says, nobody in our mission would ever say that he is a Bible translator or ever was approved as a Bible translator. Well, Brian's, he's lying. This blew my mind. He's literally lying about his history, which is why I don't trust his visions. Brian says, I have qualifications. Quote, this isn't an ad that they run they, on Facebook to, to, uh, to sell the Passion Translation. He says, I, I, is it an ad or is it just on their publisher website? I'm trying to remember now. Either way, it's an ad for the thing. Um, I have qualifications in that I have translated the New Testament as a co-translator for the Payakuna language. This is, well, I mean, is Jerry McDaniels dying, lying or is Brian Simmons lying? What's going on? Well, Brian Simmons claims that he presented, uh, you can test his timeline. He says that he was with the Payakuna in the late 80s and that he presented them with a completed New Testament in the late 80s. Okay, that's, that's a claim. That's like a factual claim, a stamp of history. Sometime in the late 80s, He's like, I, we presented them with a completed New Testament. Mm -hmm. Why does this matter? Because Brian Simmons was not there after that, right? He, he left, he acknowledges that he left the, the Payakuna people and came back to the States. So by the 90s, he's back in the States. If he's going to get credit for the translation, then the translation has to have already happened by the late 80s. Yeah. Well, the Moody Bible Institute, they have stats on translations for various um, countries and various languages. So their stats or their information on the Payakuna Bible or the Kuna Bible, it never mentions Brian Simmons, never mentions his name as being involved in translating, and it gives a different date for when the translation was done. Listen to this. Here's a quote from the Moody Bible Institute's page. They say the Kuna Bible translation uh, project began in 1982 when Wycliffe translators Keith and Wilma Forster began working with Kuna pastor Lino Smith Argongo on a new, a new Testament translation. It was published in 1995. Brian says he handed them, like in another interview with Sid Roth, he goes, it was such a pleasure to hand them a completed New Testament. And then he left before, before 95 ever came around, before 92 ever came around. He was out of there for sure. Because he claimed he was out of there before some missionaries were killed locally. That happened in 92. Maybe I'm giving you too much information, but basically no, he was good. out of there. It's he says research. he was out of there in the 80s, giving them a New Testament. The Moody Bible Institute doesn't mention his name at all. His own coworkers say he wasn't involved in the actual translate translation, the, the hard work of making it from uh, from either original or English over to Payakuna. And, um, and then Moody Bible Institute says it was done in 95, not in the 80s. Right? So he's now, exaggerating his credentials, would you say? exaggerating would be the nicest way to put it. The nicest it. way to put it would be that um, he's exaggerating. Yeah. But he's in all reality, he, he's just saying things happen that didn't happen at all. He's um, fabricating his credentials. Yeah. Don Pedersen, he says the Payakuna translation was not done while he was uh, in service with New Tribe's mission. This is unbelievable, and this man and the Passion Translation should be avoided at all cost. You must watch the full video, which I'll leave a link to below, because Mike has done a thorough job of revealing the truth on this matter and exposing the errors. He gives a lot of solid evidence from his research. So, we'll leave it at that for today, and until next time, take care and God bless.